Yeah. Hello, my name is Aaron, and, and today we'll be talking about combating medical racism. So first of all, a little bit about myself. I'm a current high school senior at James Logan High School, and I'm the founder of this Library Public Health Forum. And first of all, I want to thank our library manager, Joe Stoner, for giving us this time slot and supporting all our programs. I want to thank Trinity's mom, Hasabi, for connecting us with health professionals. And I want to thank everyone for being here today uh, to attend this uh, forum. Um, you guys are the impact of this forum, and I hope that everyone here can eventually help us um, be in this forum for years to come. Um, so we'll start off our presentation with the uh, top two uh, current uh, U.S. outbreaks by according to the CDC. We have salmonella infections. There, it's been seen in 11 states. There's been nine hospitalizations and zero deaths. Um, the mechanism is that it passes through the stomach and colonizes the intestines. So some symptoms would be diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and a high fever. And in this case, the source is pet turtles, but generally it comes from um, undercooked meat and eggs. So we should wash your hands, clean properly, and cook the food properly. And generally, the symptoms are very mild. So. Microphone. Oh, microphone. Yes, just Generally, symptoms are very mild, um, and you, no treatment is necessary. However, um, if the uh, treatment, uh, if the symptoms are severe, you may need antibiotics. The second um, outbreak is the serious infections from ice cream. It's been seen in two states. There have been two hospitalizations and zero deaths. The mechanism is that it infects cells in the intestines and spreads basolaterally. And some symptoms would be fever, muscle aches, and tiredness. Um, so the source in this case would be contaminated ice cream. So do not eat um, uh, recalled ice cream. And the treatment is that there will be mild symptoms. And uh, if, if there's mild symptoms, no treatment is needed. And if symptoms are severe, you may need antibiotics. So let's start off today's topic with a definition. So medical racism is essentially discriminatory medical practices uh, driven by biases based on race, race and ethnicity, and it's mostly due to implicit biases, which means there are biases that occur without us really consciously noticing. And I want to talk about two main uh, examples here, diagnostic bias and clinical trials and research bias. So diagnostic bias is essentially um, when medical racism affects the diagnosis. So I recently read a story on NBC News about a woman named Susan Shinagawa. She found a lump in her breast and actually asked the doctor about it. And her doctor did not diagnose her with breast cancer because he believed in the stereotype that Asian women were less likely to develop breast cancer. So she went to a second doctor and um, th that second doctor held the same stereotype. But when she insisted, that uh, there, was, there was a problem. A biopsy was done and it was discovered that she did have breast cancer. So in this case, a stereotype caused a delay in the diagnosis of breast cancer. Now next up, I want to mention uh, clinical trials with a research bias. So the first example I want to mention is Biden. It's, it was an FDA-approved um, race-based medication. So in this case, um, it was to treat congestive heart failure in African-American patients. At the time, they did a clinical trial uh, with a small sample size, and this medicine wasn't exactly very effective, but they noticed that this had a better effect in the African American patients, and this was definitely not representat representative because of the small sample size. And if this was meant for a general audience or a general, the general public, I'm pretty sure this would not have passed because uh, they would have to include all the data, and it was not very effective. And um, I'm sure everyone here knows about the birth control pill. But the origins of the birth control pill were not very ethical. The researchers, Pimser and Roth, who developed this medication, actually went to test the medication in Cuba because the restrictions there uh, were far less. They exploited the woman there. They didn't tell them uh, what they were signing up for. They didn't receive any benefits, really, because of this medication. There were some severe side, like, side effects of it, of, of this version of the medication. So although this was a, brown, a groundbreaking discovery, this, the origins of this medicine is not very ethical, just like the development of some vaccines. It was, it was tested in people like, like, let's say, people of color. And this is sort of, still sort of occurs sometimes with uh, drug, co drug companies testing in third world countries. There was an example of Pfizer testing some, some drug in Nigeria in 1996. And, um, 
first of all, I want to talk about uh, one example I read recently, uh, stereotypes related to pain perception. I read a case study about an African-American patient who fell down the stairs and felt chest pain. So he went to the doctor many times, but they brushed him off because they believed the stereotype that black patients felt less pain, and they thought that he was exaggerating his symptoms, and therefore a drug-seeking. However, this was not true because when they looked into it more, he actually had three broken ribs. And there was another study done where 73% of the participants held one of these false beliefs. Difference in sensitivity of nerve endings, the difference in the thickness of the skin, all of these are not true. Now, one, now the next example I find is far more disturbing than the previous one because this really still occurs today. So talk, uh, race, uh, the race-based index. I want to talk about GFR, first of all. GFR, or mammarian filtration rate, essentially to measure like kidney function. It's, it's basically how much is fil filtered per unit of time. And because this process to actually uh, measure GFR is very time consuming, clinicians actually rely on something called eGFR, estimated glomerular filtration rate. They calculate this based on a formula, and race, however, is taken into account. There is a race corrective factor in the equation. So for example, an African American patient would be assumed to have a higher eGFR than a patient of a different race, even if they have the same biological index because of this race correcting factor. And this is actually because there's an assumption that African American patients have more muscle mass on average. And how this is significant is because eGFR actually has something to do with creatinine levels in the blood. Now creatinine is a uh, uh, byproduct of uh, like skeletal muscle metabolism. So the more muscle mass you have, the higher the EGFR. But this assumption sort of is just very generalized and it should be more about the individual. Now what this, this bias in EGFR does is that it can reduce the access to certain treatments such as kidney transplantation. Because um, African American patients have a higher EGFR uh, despite like, if, even if someone else has, let, let's say a white patient has the same biological indexes, it would be much more likely for the white patient to receive the kidney because the estimated glomerular filtration rate says that they have a lower um, kidney function. So people of color are seriously disadvantaged in this case, and I think it's very important that they should do something about this and like update the equations and more about the biological indexes. Because uh, it's, it's important to recognize that race actually really started off as, or racial biology, an attempt to prove that people of color were in biologically inferior. This was also sort of seen in like ideas like eugenics, trying to purify the gene pool by preventing people who were considered biologically inferior, which often ended up being people of color, from reproducing. And this is actually disproven eventually, especially when we study genetics, because two people of, the, of different races could be more biologically similar than two people of the same race. And we sort of come to the conclusion that race is more of a, it's a social movie, not a biological movie. However, race, as it, because it has societal effects, can still affect health, and we'll cover that real soon. So, to combat medical racism, I want to mention three things today. Awareness advocacy, sensitivity and bias training, and finally, institutional and governmental regulation. So first of all, awareness and advocacy is what this forum is all about. I believe it's incredibly edu uh, important to educate the public about medical racism so when some somebody experiences this, they can better advocate for themselves and for their loved ones in this situation. And it's also important to educate medical students so they're conscious of this problem when they practice medicine. Now I want to talk about race conscious medicine, something we should move to, to forward, uh, we should move towards. Certain groups, because of the societal effects, would, ex uh, would be predisposed to certain conditions. Uh, and one example of this is residential segregation. Because of historical effects, people of color are generally poorer, so they live in worse neighborhoods and therefore are exposed to worse conditions and there's more pollution. This could result in them being uh, predisposed to certain conditions, and we should include that, and we should take that into account. However, the main focus should be considering people as an individual instead of using these generalized stereotypes, which often end up being inaccurate and resulting in poor quality of healthcare. So, there we should, first of all, learn to understand 
medical racism, like how historical and systemic biases can affect medical practice today. There have been clinical vignettes in which um, they use real-world uh, uh, clinical scenarios for medical practitioners to identify uh, situations where there are medical racism. And there have also been diverse patient panel discussions in which um, uh, people of different backgrounds will discuss their um, experiences in the health, in the healthcare system. So this will give some first-hand insight into the issues. And finally, I want to talk about institutional and governmental regulation. First of all, there have been anti-discrimination laws passed, which prevents um, healthcare workers from discriminating against people because of their backgrounds, whether it be race, gender, etc. There, the healthcare system has been working towards a diverse representation and cultural competence, and trying to implement cultural competency training in order to better accommodate people of different healthcare, uh, different back, backgrounds. Um, so yes, medical racism has been a problem for a long time and is still an issue. So I believe it is important to spread uh, to fight medical racism by spreading awareness on the issue. Here are my references and. If anyone has any questions, you can ask. Sure. So, with like the advent of like AI, do you think like, medical racism will increase? With the advent of AI? Yeah. Well, that really depends on what the AI is sort of trained on, and if it's if it's taking into account like um, I, I I believe an AI would be a lot less biased than a person because it's a, it's a robot essentially. It doesn't have it doesn't really as have the implicit biases that people generally form from like interacting with society. However, I don't think health uh, AI would be like I don't think AI would replace like healthcare, for example. I believe doctors like will still there's although healthcare is like a science, it's also an art. There, there is a care component, so there will always be a human factor. And that also that could also maybe like there will still be biases because there will you still will be dealing with people in healthcare. Anything else? Uh, are there any uh, you know, attempts to address these? Like, are there any laws in play that uh, kind of like address the issues of not only the human the sample they take? Oh, could you speak up? I can't really hear what you're saying. Sorry. Can <laughs> <laughs> I don't bring the microphone? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, are there any attempts to address the racism uh, in the medical industry? Also, it's not only racism, if you go by geography, like companies are located in one country, right? So how are they trying to address the samples across the regions? Is, is there any attempt? Well, um, this is a systemic problem, so there have been laws passed. So there's, there's been quite a few uh, things, that, like for example, they are trying, like you know, affirmative action, right? They are trying to hire people of different backgrounds, and that can sort of, uh, sort of alleviate the problem. But this is a pretty deep rooted problem, and it's going to be very hard to like directly address. Then I guess we'll, uh, I guess we'll. Uh, have our next presenter, uh, presenter, Trinity, talking about the effects of secondhand smoking. Yes.